Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Teamer colored All Will Be One Planeswalker deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 5 mana Mythic Rare Enchantment, saying whenever we put one or more counters on a permanent or player, All Will Be One deals that much damage to target opponent, creature an opponent controls, or Planeswalker an opponent controls. So All Will Be One has great synergy with Planeswalkers, as it will enter with a bunch of loyalty counters, which translate into that much damage to any target. So that's what we're trying to set up. Up. Now, because All Will Be One often comes down without affecting the board right away, we want to be able to play it alongside a Planeswalker in the same turn, and what better way to do it than Storm the Festival, so that's another key card in this deck. The 6 mana sorcery lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, and put up to 2 permanent cards with mana value 5 or less from among them onto the battlefield, and we can also flash it back from the graveyard for 10 mana, which also frequently happens in our deck, thanks to the help from a Root Coil Creeper, which can make 2 mana when it comes to casting spells out of our graveyard, and can even sacrifice it to get back an exiled flashback card, so we can maybe recycle Storm the Festival a second time. So that's what we're trying to set up. Now what are the Planeswalkers in our deck? At 5 mana there's Ren and 7, which can potentially plus 1 milling a few cards and finding additional lands to put in hand, and then by milling cards we can also potentially put Storm the Festival in our graveyard, which is perfect for flashing it back. Then we can also make a large Tree Folk with a minus 3, which also synergizes very nicely with Luca Bound to Ruin, which has the completed mana cost, so we can potentially cast it at 4 mana, which makes it very helpful when it comes to our curve, since we want to pack as many 5 mana cards in the deck as possible to make Storm the Festival effective and to synergize with All Will Be One, but then the problem is you end up with a lot of 5 drops and the curve doesn't look great, but thanks to Luca and Taimyo both being castable at 4 mana and 2 life, we have a much better curve, then Luca can minus 1 to immediately make a 3-3 beast token, can also plus one adding red and green that we can use to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures, which can also be helpful in maybe deploying an armored scrap gorger or cultivator. Also have the Miglos Mace Crusher, which we can also play and or activate using that two mana, so that can be helpful. And then a minus four is especially powerful with a tree folk token from a Ren and Seven, dealing X damage divided as we choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers, where X is the greatest power among creatures we controlled as we activated this ability. So even if they kill our creature in response, we still get to deal the most damage possible. And then we also have three copies of Tamyo Completed Sage, which can also be cast for four mana and two life, in which case it enters with three loyalty instead of five, the plus one locking down an artifact or creature for an entire turn cycle. The minus X can also be great, exiling a non-land permanent card with mana value X from our graveyard, and we get to create a token that's a copy of that card. So let's say we hit both All Will Be One and Tamyo with a Storm the Festival, we immediately deal deal 5 damage, then we could minus 5 Tamiyo to get back another 5 mana Planeswalker from our graveyard, to once again deal 5 damage with our All Will Be One, and then potentially even more if we decide to plus any of our Planeswalkers. So that's what Tamiyo is capable of. And the minus 7 ultimate is also quite achievable, creating a legendary artifact token named Tamiyo's Notebook, giving all our spells a 2 mana discount, and can also tap to draw a card, so that can also make it much easier to flash back a Storm the Festival for instance. Then going over the rest of our deck, we have a bit more ramp with two copies of Expand the Sphere, which is slightly worse when it comes to ramping than Cartographer's Survey, but has the upside of potentially letting us proliferate, which can be very helpful, especially with our enchantment in play, as we can just uh, decide to add a bunch of loyalty counters or oil counters to our permanents, which will translate into a ton of damage, also makes it easier to potentially ultimate a Tamyo, which can also be worth it. And then the early part of our deck includes a few ramp creatures, including the Rustfine Cultivator, a 1-2, that can tap to put an oil counter on itself, and we can tap remove an oil counter to untap target land, so every two turns the cultivator can help us generate one extra mana. And then more importantly, by adding an oil counter to the cultivator, we also get to deal one damage with our all will be one, which can be quite nice. 
At 2 mana we mentioned Rootcoil Creeper, very nice alongside Storm the Festival. The only downside over something like Loam Speaker is that we cannot cast it using the red-green mana from Luka, since it does require some blue mana to cast. And then a full set of armored Scrap Gorger, an O3 tapping for 1 mana of any color, and whenever the Scrap Gorger becomes tapped, we exile target card from a graveyard and put an oil counter on the Scrap Gorger. So we only get an oil counter if we actually exile a card with it, but the exiling part is not optional, so that can sometimes be awkward if, let's say, Storm the Festival is the only card in a graveyard, then we will be forced to exile it, but so far hasn't been a huge concern, and then Renan 7 milling additional cards into the graveyard also keeps fueling the Scrap Gorger, and then by adding oil counters once again we deal damage with All Will Be One, and as soon as it has three or more oil counters on it, it will also get plus three plus O, so it can potentially start beating down. And then we have a Migloss Mace Crusher at 3 mana, a 4-4 that enters with 5 oil counters on it, so it can deal 5 damage with all will be 1 in play. And then we can remove some of those oil counters to give Vigilance a Menace until our turn, maybe give it plus 2 plus 2, or more importantly destroy an artifact or enchantment. And then a 4-4 body, also great at protecting our planeswalkers early on. And then I'm also playing a 1-off copy of Vodalian Mindsinger, which I haven't gotten the chance to include in any decks so far, but it actually has quite a bit of synergy. We're a ramp deck, so we should be able to get to 7 mana to doubly kick it for both one and a red and one and a green, in which case it will enter with four plus one plus one counters on it, making it a 6-6, six, six. and then when it enters we can steal an opposing creature with power less than the Mindsinger for as long as we control it, and then it can also potentially trigger our all will be one. The only downside is that if we find it off Storm the Festival it's only going to be a 2-2, two, two, so it can be a bit disappointing there. And then a mana base doesn't get to play with any tri lands, unfortunately, so we're stuck with just playing a whole bunch of dual lands, which can be kind of a downfall sometimes of these three color decks if the mana base doesn't work out, but at least we get to play with a new copper line gorge, so it should still work out just fine, even if it means taking a bit of damage off our pain lands. And then we've got two basics, couple channel lands for added interaction. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not perfect, but keepable. If Creeper survives, we can set up a turn 3 Luka. Hopefully turn 4 Renan 7. If they can kill Creeper, our hand kind of falls apart. So hopefully that doesn't happen. A Riveteer's Overlook, so a Junt Colors. Gets a Mountain. Backup Creeper's helpful, so at least if they kill the first one, we can still make a proactive play. The one downside of Creeper over something like... The Loam Speaker is that we can't play it off the plus one from Luka, but the ability from Creeper to help with a flashback Storm the Festival more than makes up for it, I think. His opponent had the cut down. So whatever happens, we can play Luka next turn. Prowler points towards some graveyard synergies. Could be a Tyvar deck. So could play Luka, or we could run on seven, and then it's unclear whether we start plussing or a minus instead. Milling a Storm the Festival could be useful. Or we can just start making beast tokens, which I also don't mind. And then with a Tree Folk from Renan 7, the minus 4 also becomes much more effective. Ooh, Soul of Windgrace, that's definitely worth taking out. Can provide a ton of value here with a fetch land. So that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I think as it stands, Ren, make a Tree Folk, and then minus Luka on Soul of Windgrace. And we even get to take out the Prowler for value here. And attack for five. Fable, that's acceptable. And a Tamiyo, could even get back a Luka right away, but probably fine just plussing on the Shaman and keeping up the pressure. Ren can plus. And we milled Storm the Festival, so we're not too far from flashing that back. So if Tamio gets back another Root Coil Creeper next turn, I could flashback Storm 
That may be better than just plussing on the Shaman, although both are reasonable options. So yeah, let's say we attack with a Tree Folk. Keep our beast back to block. Opponent's got to go for the throats, that's fine. And then minus two. Get back another creeper. And then next turn we can flashback storm. Got a blocker for the shaman. If they kill my beast, do I trade is a question. Maybe I don't. Titan of Industry is a good one. Luckily we don't have any artifacts or enchantments for them to destroy. So just shield counter and rhino. Still beatable. So we will need to take care of the reflection of Kiki-Jiki before it copies Titan. But flashback storm seems like a good starting point. And then I think we wait on activating our planeswalkers in case we hit and all will be one. Alright, back up Tamios. Now a little awkward since we didn't activate the first one. Could just get two lands instead. Which isn't exciting, but... We could mill another Storm the Festival with Ren, or we might make another token. Sure. So, Tamyo pluses on Titan. And then Ren kind of wants to keep plussing here. Hit a bunch of lands, including Boseju, which could also answer Fable. Although we could just play a Scrap Gorger as a blocker for the Rhino. And unless Typhor shows up, they wouldn't be able to activate Reflection yet. And then Creeper could eventually get back during the festival as well from Exile. So we've got a few options going into next turn. I think I'm okay chumping with Scrap Gorger. Although Scrap Gorger giving us some graveyard hate could also be helpful in the matchup. Another Titan, I guess, makes me glad I didn't hit an All Will Be One since I could have destroyed it here. Although now Reflections also protected. So I can still plus Tamyo to prevent it from activating, but that frees up a double Titan. So, yeah, we've got some decisions to make. Soaring City could also bounce Reflection, and then it's going to take a while for them to reset it. Could just make a large Tree Folk with Ren to hold off the Titans, hopefully. Or we could cash in a Root Coil Creeper to get back Storm the Festival. And then I should still be able to cast it. Yeah, let's do that. And then now, Ren I think is going to mine us either way, so no need to hold the activation for post-storm. Tamiya on the other hand might want to plus, and then it can take out the shield counter if we plus, which could be useful. There's only one Tamiya left in the deck, so I think this is relatively safe to just fire off. No all will be one, but a backup Ren and Miglos. So glad we minused with the other one, and I think we'll minus again, just make another large blocker in case I remove the first one. And then time your pluses on Reflection. We do get a discount on Channel thanks to our Legendary, so I could channel Soaring City for 3 mana if necessary. Miglos could also destroy Artifact or Enchantments, but still leaves the Shield counter a problem. And then next turn, Flashback Storm once again. Could use Luka to take out Titan. Cemetery Desecrator, that's too bad. That's going to exile our Storm the Festival. And that's also going to be able to take out a Planeswalker. So that was a very good hit. Next turn we could take out Desecrator with Luka, but then it gets to take something else out. And at least we still have our Tree Folk tokens holding the fort. Okay, what did our opponent exile? Planeswalker. So they did not exile Storm the Festival, but they did take out Taimyo here. Yeah, kind of surprised. 
So they don't seem to have any profitable attacks. Do I cash in counters from Miglos to remove the shield counter here? Might be okay. Because then next turn with Luka and the huge tree folk will be able to deal a ton of damage. So start by plussing. copies of Storm the Festival available, although if I flash it back, even if we use Creeper for 2 mana, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I'm not gonna have the mana to play a Luka, and I think that's more important right now. Minus, take care of a bunch of stuff. So we've got 11 damage to spread out to here. And then maybe just uh, seven here, leaving two more to take out a Shaman. That seems okay. And then do I attack with a Tree Folk? Pretty happy just sitting back and flashing back Storm the Festival. Should have the late game covered. Could also just play another Luka, but maybe they'll spend some resources killing the first one. And our opponent explodes, yeah, just too far behind. Could eventually flashback Storm a few times. And then if we either hit Tamio or All Will Be One, we'll get access to it, since one's in the graveyard here, I guess even two of them. So we were pretty likely to eventually find one with a Storm Festival, but if not, if we found our final Tamio, we also would have been able to get it back from the graveyard. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing an expensive curve topper, but at least Miglos is a decent mana sink. So I'll try it. Got the early acceleration. And then hopefully find a Storm the Festival up against a life gain deck. Green White and a Malira, so points prepared to fight the poison decks. Doesn't bother us too much, and they're storm the festival, excellent. So for now, Scrap Gorger can take up Cultivator in the opponent's turn. And then we could generate five mana next turn. Not quite enough for Storm. Torrents. Okay, opponent's gonna start going wide with tokens. So hopefully we can find our enchantment with Storm the Festival. Opponent can hit us for three. At least Miglos is gonna be a decent blocker for us. And then we could still play another Cultivator as well. And then with double Cultivator Scram Gorger, we've got a lot of ways to add counters to our creatures, which could mow down the opponent's team once we find our All Will Be One enchantment. So it's all gonna come down to whether or not we have a good Storm the Festival. Also not too far from flashing it back. So we'll see. Another Veteran. So opponent's gonna gain a lot of life, but our deck doesn't really mind, since once we get our engines online, we can usually deal with the opponent's entire board, and then eventually take over. Adversary not pumping the team, just as a 3-1. Opponent up to 28 already. No attacks. Level up Cultivator. Luka's not bad, but let's Storm first and uh, hang on to Soaring City. So we need to tap a land, untap it. Play Storm. And yeah, there's our enchantment, perfect. Grab another Scrap Gorger, I think, although maybe I'm better off just getting an extra land 
since Scrap Gorger doesn't have many cards in Graveyard to get the uh, oil counters on it. So I'll just grab another land. And then I could deal one damage right now. But might as well wait and see what's next. Can maybe take out the Adversary or a Veteran. If they can remove Migloss, we'll take a pretty significant hit. Opponent shoves all out. Could kill the token before it trains. Uh, I think I'm better off just blocking Veteran and then activating Cultivator. And then we can block Torrens. Block Veteran. And take out Adversary. Okay, opponent saves Torrens with Melira. And then... That's all for now. Torrens comes back, but loses a counter. And our opponent's board not looking too threatening anymore. Got a few cards in Graveyard now to exile with a Scramp Gorger. And another Storm. Okay. So how much mana are we working with? Six, seven, eight, nine. Not quite enough to flash back, but yeah, cast another one. Why not? Finding all will be one and a land. And then now we can deal two damage per cultivator. So let's just do that now. Take out Torrents. And I'll leave the other one back for the time being. Could also maybe kill Veteran and then exile it with Scram Gorger. Although I can still do that in the opponent's turn. So I'm just gonna pass. Phantom attacks. I'll take the one damage in case they play another creature I would prefer taking out. And then end of turn, put an oil counter on it. One to Veteran, one to Phantom, and then Scram Gorger can exile the Veteran before they can disturb it. And we'll take out a 1-1 one, one and deal one upstairs. Okay, time to flash back Storm the Festival. We'll have to do a little dance here. Do we have enough? Glad our opponent still has a few cards in Graveyard, so I don't have to exile my own Storm, which can happen in this deck, which is a little awkward sometimes. Make sure we take out the same token. And we hit Tamiyo, and another Migloss has to be worth it. That's 10 damage times 2, so 20 total. This can get an oil counter. Oil counter, two more damage. And then if I attack... And then minus time you get back another Migloss. Ooh, Cemetery Protector. Should be okay. I guess by exiling Migloss I can get it back with time you. That's the drawback, otherwise I would have gotten back Migloss and that's ten more damage. Now we'll just have to tap Protector, deal two more. And then next turn we should get there with a storm. But yeah, the graveyard hit actually coming in clutch, giving the opponent an extra turn. But yeah, not enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems a little too slow without any early ramp creatures, but yeah, would have had a lot of potential otherwise. Take a mulligan. This is a bit more balanced, even though we will need to draw a few lands still. 
Turn one cultivator. And then, yeah, if we draw lands for the next two or three turns, I'll be happy. Up against a red aggro. Scrap Gorge are still pretty decent. So if we draw a land, we could actually cast a full 5 mana Planeswalker next turn. If we don't, we can play one for 4 mana still. Although double Phoenix check will make it difficult to keep our Planeswalkers around. Okay, found a Ren and 7, although we cannot cast it at the moment. So I guess we'll give a 4 mana Planeswalker a shot. between Luca and Tamiyo, so Luca will go to 3 loyalty and then down to 2 if I minus, so that's not great. So probably prefer Tamiyo, which can lock down a Phoenix Chick at least. Right, Lightning Strike is going to take care of it, but also could have killed the creature, so... A fine exchange, even though we need to rebuild the oil counter on Cultivator now. Creeper's fine. So next turn we should be able to play Ren and Seven, start hitting more land drops. Ooh, Solfem. Okay, so non comma damage will be doubled now. And then probably worth it to activate Scrap Gorger, even though if I activate it again in my turn I'll be forced to exile Tamiya, which we may want to avoid. So I'll wait on uh, tapping it, I think. Okay. So now I could go for Storm the Festival, which may be the highest upside play. Exile Lightning Strike, and we hit Tamiyo and a land. So it could have been better, could have been worse. And then Tamiyo locked down Solfim, as opposed to, yeah, get back Tamiyo doesn't accomplish much. So Tamiyo probably dies to another burn spell. Solfim becomes indestructible, fair enough. Can still keep it locked down with Tamiyo. Soaring City is in place, so we don't have a way to bounce it anymore. So I don't know if we can actually remove Solfim now. But yeah, we've got options. I have four, five, six, seven mana when it comes to flashing back Storm the Festival. I could just try and double proliferate, expand the sphere, and then ultimate Tamiyo. Which may be worth it. Sure, why not? And then we should put an oil counter on this first. Cast Expand the Sphere with a plan of just proliferating. Doesn't have to be twice, maybe just grab one land still. And then I can ultimate. Since time I was going to die to the Phoenix Chick anyway. And then now we could still cast Luca if we'd like. Although it's going to probably end up dying since I'm going to be forced to make a beast to chump Solfim. Start by drawing with a notebook. And then now I don't mind playing Ren, which can make a pretty large tree folk. I exile another card from the opponents. So the tree folk should be able to block Solfem without dying, but a burn spell can maybe still take care of it. Alright, a lightning strike is 6 damage. So we're going to take 7 down to 4, that to a play with fire here. Ronin, that's plus 2 damage. So we're still alive, but barely. Opponent will take out Ren. So still take 7 total. And then we should probably flashback Storm the Festival now. I 
gets a discount from the notebook. We hit a Mind Singer. Oh man, this could have been a way to steal Solfim if we could actually cast and kick it. But uh, all will be one is good, and then probably just grab the land at this point. Since yeah, Mind Singer, I guess could steal a Phoenix Chick. It's not bad actually. Sure, we'll grab Mind Singer anyway. Steal Phoenix Chick. Should have probably drawn with a notebook first, but I imagine casting Storm Festival is still the best we can do. Find another cultivator. Okay, so if I play Luca, we can deal some damage with our All Will Be One. This finishes off Phoenix Chick. Which we could also exile eventually. Play Luca full price. And make a token after dealing five upstairs. Okay, so we can chump Solfim, block the Ronin. Opponent is going to just cycle to try and find a burn spell to close out the game. And looks like they may have found one. Play with fires for damage. Alright, GG's very close. Next turn we should have been able to overpower our opponent. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. We'll need some top ends eventually, but for now, Cultivator, turn to Scrap Gorger, facing blue white. Could be control. So, could see a couple sweepers in our future. Augury to proliferate, and find a card in the top three. Add an oil counter. And we'll play Miglos. That resolves. Could play another Cultivator, although that may be overextending into a Depopulate. I'm just gonna pass. Scrap Gorger can exile the Augury. Put on Cycles Tower. Okay, we get to untap, so let's make sure to add some oil counters. Put on Flashing and Emperor. Fair enough. Now Miglos can take care of it. Let's grab Gorger down. Even a Cultivator is enough to finish off the Emperor, and look how was a nice draw. So, yeah, we'll smash the opponent with Miglos, finish off Emperor, play this for 4 mana. And make a Beast for starters. Another Emperor exiles Miglos. I am the Emperor of Kamikaze. And then, for now, not too tempted to make another beast. I'll just play another Cultivator, or maybe even two. And then preserve some loyalty to make more beasts to recover from a board wipe. Probably okay to play Buseju, hang on to Soaring City. Do I play another Cultivator is a question. I think we have enough creatures in play. At some point we'll see the Populator farewell. Lay down arms instead? Sure. Renan 7 was a good draw. So step 1, probably attack with just a beast. Possible they have a third Emperor since they were... Quite happy to use the first two copies, Igancho instead. Okay. So 
So it's still possible they have a negate for Ren, otherwise this should be good to go. Could maybe play around a Syncopate. Although the counter spell they're more likely to have is the one, unless you pay two, that becomes a hard counter for Poisoned. So in that case, it's not like I'm going to be able to pay for it, but I guess it's worth a shot. Play Ren. That resolves pretty swiftly. So this will make a Tree Folk for now. And I guess we'll make a Beast to keep up the pressure. And I'll hang on to Cultivator. One probably needs to play Sweeper if they have one. Eternal Wonder instead. Okay, that's a little awkward because now they can leave us with a Cultivator. This ends today. Never mind, opponent thanks all our Tree Folk. You're coming with me. Since the Cultivator would have been able to finish off the Eternal Wonder, of course. Taimyo is great too. So, where do we want to start? Probably plus, see what we mill over in case Taimyo can get it back. And we mill the Storm the Festival, that's nice. A Luka can make another beast, although we can only attack Amper with one of our tokens. That's still probably pretty good. How much mana do we have in play? Six, seven, eight potentially for flashing back Storm. So not quite there yet. But we'll attack Wanderer. And then I think I want to plus Luka in case we need to eventually uh, minus four. I guess we could have also tried to get it back with Tamyo at some point. And then Tamyo will play for full price. This will just plus. No need to get anything back. And I think I play another Cultivator now. In case we can set up a Storm the Festival in the near future. Yeah, maybe minusing Luka to then next turn minus again, put it in the graveyard, and then get it back with Tamyo. And then Luka can deal damage to Planeswalkers. So we'll see how this plays out. Tamyo can lock down the Samurai, and then we can attack it with a Beast. Another Storm the Festival. So we should probably start there, in case we hit all will be one, so plusing our Planeswalkers will also deal damage. And uh, might as well play the land since our opponent knows about it. Opponent may have a counter, negate. Okay. In that case, I'll lock down the Samurai. Attack. This can maybe just go face and keep the other Cultivator to add a counter. Okay, that worked. And then Luca, Probably happy to make another Beast, or we can make sure we can minus four if needed. And Run can keep plussing. Okay, another Storm. So plenty of action in the graveyard. Hopefully it doesn't get exiled. Although we can also ultimate our Tamyo now. Even though the notebook is not necessarily going to stay in play for opponent has answers to artifacts and our opponent scoops it up, yeah. The trifecta of Planeswalkers good enough to overpower the blue-white control deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems functional. Just need to find some of our curve toppers eventually. But we get to curve out nicely. Cult Vader, turn to Scrap Gorger. And there's our storm, perfect. Facing Junt. And a cut down takes care of Scrap Gorger. Can still play Migloss if we'd like, or we can play Creeper to get closer to Storm the Festival, which may just be better here. And then I'll keep putting counters on Cultivator for the time being. And then we just need a big storm the festival, hitting some of our expensive cards. Harvester can eventually take out one of our creatures. Although we could actually play Miglos and try and take out the artifact, so they don't have any blood tokens left. But let's just cast the storm the festival. 
and hope to hit some goodies. Migloss and Creeper, probably the pick. And with double Creeper it's not too difficult to flash back Storm the Festival, since they both add two mana for it. And then eventually we could also get back a Storm from Exile. Migloss exiled here, not a big deal. And they may take out a Creeper. Okay, they'll set us back a bit. But now Tamyo is a pretty good draw. So if we cannot flash back Storm, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, two mana short. Then Tamyo get back Creeper might be the move. Could also start plusing Tamyo work up towards an ultimate, although if her opponent has Planeswalker removal, I prefer getting immediate value. And then Creeper can attack. Opponent might be playing with Tyvar, which can get back Harvester and kill our creatures over and over. It's gonna be another Harvester for now. Hope there's no Tyvar. And just a Riveteer's Charm. So highest mana value means time you down. Okay, so the Storm the Festival plan is still alive at least. Okay, let's uh, flashback Storm. Need to untap a land for it. And back up time, yo. Do I want land versus creeper? Land lets me play cultivator, so maybe I prefer land now. And then lockdown harvester seems decent. Okay. So now we can maybe get to an ultimate. Opponent goes digging, that's good news. And a teachings. Gix's command, good to know about. And Fable we can destroy with Miglos. Okay, so we've got a ton of options. Our opponent being empty-handed means I'm less scared of the second chapter of Fable. So for now, play Ren, play Miglos without needing to necessarily uh, blow up an artifact or enchantment right away. And then Ren, probably plussing is fine since it can maybe mill over another storm the festival. Hit three lanes, always nice. And then Tamiya will keep plussing on Harvester. Play Miglos and then uh, tap land seems fine. Okay. So next turn we could ultimate Tamiya. Although opponent has shown cards that could potentially answer our uh, notebook. Fable gets to discard one card and draw. And opponent goes digging. All right. Do we get to ultimate a Tamiyo? Cut down our creeper, that's fine. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Get to ultimate Tamiyo, make a notebook. And then Ren can keep plussing to eventually mill over another Storm the Festival. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is promising, although not perfect, since we can't play turn two creeper and turn one cultivator with this mana. So we have to make a decision. Opponent on blue-white soldiers. Okay, I guess I prefer the earlier blocker now. Harbin can eventually be a threat. And uh, yeah, just play another Gorge next turn. Can play Cascade into Creeper. Siege Veteran can pump Frontliner to attack past Cultivator now, but pumps Harbin instead. Okay, so. Pwns off to a decent start. Could double spell our two drops now, which seems worth it. And I still like that over just playing a 4 mana Luka here. This potentially sets up our Storm the Festival or run in 7 to make a Tree Folk. 
But if we can hit an all will be one and then play our planeswalkers, it's going to be much better for us. Officer times two. So Harbin's close to giving the team flying. So that's a concern. Might have to just play Luca and take that out. Although, I guess we can only deal two damage at most, which is not enough. So I think we just need to hope for a big storm the festival. If Ren and Seven makes a tree folk, that's only one blocker. And then we should still be pretty dead. So yeah, look only dealing two damage here is not quite good enough. Okay, let's storm and cross our fingers. Mig loss is probably not enough here. So we'll pass, but next turn an all-out attack should still be lethal. Okay. Well, Harbin turns out to be pretty good here when we couldn't answer it in time. So the plus one counter they placed on it earlier made the difference, otherwise we would have been able to take it out with Luca. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little on the slow side with our Veil coming into play tapped. Not as good as Copper Line Gorge here. But I think it's still a keep overall. Can play turn 2 Creeper, turn 3 Miglos. And now I guess we get to curve out perfectly. And then we'll have a large creature to maybe set up the minus 4 from our Planeswalker. Facing Esper, turn 2 Bankbuster. We can eventually take out with Miglos as well, but it's going to take a while. A Renan 7, a nice pickup. Could maybe run that out next turn. Evolving Wilds could imply a 4 color deck. Nope, just gets another Swamp. So we have to be aware of potential counter spells. Now with two copies of Luka, if one gets countered, it's not the end of the world. So we'll give that a shot. That resolved. And we'll start making beasts. Bangbuster draws. If we use Luka to make mana for creatures, I could play Miglos, blow up Bankbuster before they get any more value. They might crew it now to pressure Luka, but they stay back. Okay, so we've got options, which is always good. But yeah, blowing up Bankbuster seems like a good value play. Well, their opponent is pretty much tapped out, so could be a window to resolve Ren and Seven as well. And then just make another beast for the time being. Sure. And then I like plussing. Try and mill a Storm the Festival, hit more land drops. And then we should have enough on defense to protect our planeswalkers. And next turn, Miglos can take out Bankbuster. Ren could keep plussing. And hope to pick up our enchantment at some point, since we have a lot of counters in hand. Opponent passes with a lot of mana available. Switches to nighttime. And then start by activating some of our planeswalkers. Luka for mana. A run for land still. And we mill the storm the festival, excellent. So can't flash that back just yet, but uh, try Miglos. See if there's a response. Airtight score into counter means we can resolve Tamio. 
which can either get back Megloss or we could keep something tamped down here as well. So get back Megloss still doesn't let me activate it to destroy Bankbuster. So could just tap down the Bankbuster. This will transform back to its daytime side. Sure. So they can draw on the way out. But at least a 4-4 wouldn't be able to attack. Could even see myself using the zero ability next turn to put a few lands in play. So how's our opponent gonna deal with all our planeswalkers is a question. Invoke Despair can handle one of them, just sacrifice Luca. They might have some other more targeted removal spells. And then if we count our mana, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we're still one away from flashing back storm. Back up bank buster. Becomes crude, interesting. Still has summoning sickness, so it's not attacking here. Okay. Oil counter on cultivator. And a storm the festival drawn is always nice. So on the one hand, we want to storm first in case we hit all will be one to then get more damage from plusing planeswalkers. On the other hand, we could hit other planeswalkers, in which case we want to use these first. But uh, yeah, let's just storm and then play a land first to pay for conditional counter spells. See if this resolves. And our opponent explodes, so sadly don't get to see our enchantment hit the battlefield, but we were pretty far ahead. Alright, so we got to see our teamer all will be one deck in action. Sadly, didn't get to see our enchantment in play as much as I would have liked, but the Planeswalker Trifecta proved to be quite valuable, and the combination of all the Planeswalkers also works quite nicely, as we have Ren and Seven making a large tree folk to set up a Lucas minus four ability, Tamyo getting back various Planeswalkers or permanents from the graveyard, and then we also have the ability to just find our Storm the Festival by plussing Ren and Seven and by potentially milling it, and Tamyo even getting back. Root Coil Creeper, which gets back Storm the Festival, so it's got a pretty nice engine once we get to the mid to late game, but the deck definitely has a lot of weaknesses since we rely on our early ramp creatures. If the opponent takes them out, they can easily disrupt our curve, and then it's gonna take a while before we get our Planeswalkers down. Against very aggressive decks, we also don't have a lot of cheap interaction necessarily, so a deck like Soldiers can quickly amass a lethal board, and since we don't have any sweeper effects, it's gonna be difficult to win that matchup. So I don't think this deck is particularly competitive competitive, but a ton of fun if you want to make use of the new All Will Be One enchantment. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.